Mathematical proof by induction is a really useful method of proof that you'll probably use quite often if you go into math, particularly number theory. And mathematical induction says if you have a list of statements, p1, p2, p3, all the way to pn, uh, one for each positive integer, then every statement on the list must be true if two conditions hold. First, p1, the base case, or the first statement, is true. And then you can show that for each positive integer k, if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true. Okay, So what we're going to do to kind of utilize this proof is I'm going to do an example where we're going to prove something by induction. Okay, and Hopefully it will make a little bit more sense as we do it. So I want to prove that the sum, we're going to focus in this video on sums and proving sums by induction. Uh, there are other kinds of problems you can prove by induction, and if you want to look at some of the other common ones, those videos are on this same playlist, so be sure to check those out. We're going to do the sum from i equals 1 to n of 4i plus 5, and I'm going to claim that that is equal to 2n squared plus 7n. Okay, And I want to prove that this is true. So in order to prove this is true with induction, there's two steps. First, we have to prove the base case. And the way we prove the base case is we say, okay, what's the lowest possible thing that this is true for? i equals 1, right? That's where we're starting. So I'm going to prove that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same when n equals 1. So my base case here is n equals 1. So I'm going to say we have the sum from i equals 1 to n, uh, sorry, to, yeah, to n equals 1 of 4i plus 5. So that's just going to be equal to, I'm going to plug in 1 here, right? So I'm going to have 4 plus 5 is 9. And does that equal the right-hand side? Well, on the right-hand side, I have 2 times 1 squared plus 7 times 1, which is equal to 9. So my left-hand side equals my right-hand side, and I'm good. Okay, So we've proven the base case. Now, the base case often is going to be trivial. Not always, but often. Step 2 is going to be the harder one. So for step 2, what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way and say, Let's assume that this is true and try to show that it's true for n plus 1 given this. Because if we do that, that will have shown that it is true for all statements k. It satisfies that second statement of for each positive integer k. If pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true. So we're going to assume that the sum from 1 to n of 4i plus 5 is equal to 2n squared plus 7n. Okay. I'm going to assume this is true. And what I'm going to prove is I'm going to prove that the sum, wow, that was a bad sigma, the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of 4i plus 5 is equal to the same kind of expression. But here, now instead of n, right, we have n plus 1. So 2n plus 1 squared plus 7 times n plus 1. Okay. So the trick to induction generally is that you want to find a way to work your assumption into your proof. So that kind of happens differently in, uh, depending on the kind of problem that you have. For sums, I want to put a sum from 1 to n into my proof from 1 to n plus 1. How do I do that? Well, the trick for sums is I'm going to split my sum from 1 to n and from n plus 1 to n plus 1. So here's what that looks like. I'm going to clear all this away because we're out of space. OK. So here's what that looks like. I'm going to split my uh, sum, the n plus 1. So we have the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of 4i plus 5. I'm going to split it into the sum from i equals 1 to n of 4i plus 5 plus the sum from i equals n plus 1 to n plus 1 of 4i plus 5. Okay, So now what I can do is say, oh, well, I know how to do this because this is just my assumption statement, um, which we had written before. right? We're assuming that this statement here is true. So I can write what's on the left as 2n squared plus 7n. 
And for what's on the right, I'm just evaluating this function at n plus 1. So I have plus 4 times n plus 1 plus 5. So what we need to do is we need to show that this is equal to the right-hand side of the thing we were trying to prove. So the right-hand side of that, in case you forgot, was 2 n plus 1 squared plus 7 n plus 1. Okay. So can we show that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 4. So I'm going to have 2n squared plus 7n plus 4n plus 4 plus 5. Okay. And often when you're doing induction, it's actually a pretty good algebra exercise. You get to flex your algebra muscles a little bit. Because you're going to do some weird stuff sometimes to make sure that this looks like what you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be equal to 2 times n squared, so I pulled the 2 out of the n squared, plus 2n, so I pulled the 2 out of the 4n, plus 1, where what I did was I took the 4 and I split it into 2 plus 2. And I put this 2 with this and factored it out, and this 2 is going to go with the 5. So I'm going to have plus 7k plus 7 over here, which means I'm going to have 2 times n plus 1 squared, if I factor uh, my first expression plus 7 times, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote k over here. It's an n. I'm, you, I'll probably mess up my you know, variables a bunch. Uh, n plus 1. Okay, And we did it. We proved the statement for n plus 1, and then given the statement for n, and then we proved the base case, and now we have proven it by induction. Okay, So we're done. So that's how you prove when you have sums, how you're going to prove sums by induction. So let's do uh, one more example just to, to make sure you feel good about it. Get rid of this, these marks. Let's prove that the sum, so I wanna prove that the sum from uh, k equals one to n of k times k plus one is equal to n times n plus one times n plus two divided by three. Okay, so we proved the base case first. For the case where n equals one, uh, we can just look at this, right? I have one times one plus one, that's gonna be two. So I'm gonna have, so for the base case, uh, I have, this is gonna be for n equals one, right? I have two equals, and over here I have one times two times three is gonna be six. Six over three, which is equal to two, we're good. We proved the base case. Now, what we're doing is we're gonna say, okay, Let's assume that this is true and prove that the sum from k equals 1 to n plus 1 of k times k plus 1 is equal to, and we're subbing in all this, all the n's become n plus 1's. So this n becomes an n plus 1, this becomes an n plus 1 plus 1, so an n plus 2. Then we have an n plus 3, and that's all divided by 3. So this is what I want to prove. So remember the trick. The trick is to we get your assumption into your proof. So we're going to split this sum, because that's what we do for sum problems. So I'm going to write this as the sum from k equals 1 to n of k times k plus 1. And then I'm going to do plus the sum from k equals n plus 1 to n plus 1 of k times k plus 1. And then I can say, okay, well I know that the stuff on the left is my assumption. So I can just write on the left, I have n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 3. And on the right, we're just evaluating it at n plus 1. So I get on the right, n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2. So I want to add these together, so I'm going to get a common denominator. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3. So now I'm going to have n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 plus 3, oh, I'm going to run out of space, times n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 3. Okay. And now both these terms have an n plus 1 times n plus 2, so I'm going to pull those to the front. And what I'm going to be left with is n plus 1 times n plus 2 times what's left, we're left with an n plus 3. And this is all divided by 3. So we proved it. We got the left-hand side, this statement, 
to be equal to the right hand side, this statement. Okay? So that's how you do proof by induction, um, specifically when you are doing sums. If you want to see uh, divisibility problems or you would like to see, um, what else do we do? Inequalities, then check out the other videos in this uh, playlist.